homelessness, crime, some of the key issues the county is tackling. Board of Supervisors Chair Nathan Fletcher announced these new initiatives during his State of the County address last night, and he's joining us uh, this morning here to discuss this. Uh, good morning to you, Chair. Thanks for uh, coming on the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, we've been talking about housing. It impacts um, so many of us, uh, low income, even middle class now, finding it tough to find a home or afford a home here. So what plan are you suggesting uh, to address this? Well, we talked a lot last night. I mean, the, the cost of housing is too much. Gas, utilities, everything is really hitting working class families hard. And we really rolled out a, a, a suite, a range of things we can do to one, demonstrate things that are in motion. You know, we're seeing progress and what more we can do. You know, we've got a thousand units of affordable housing going on county owned land, but I want us all to come together. Let's come up with a plan to develop 10,000 uh, units of affordable housing um, and, and, and so much more. And you're right. You know, we talk a lot about homelessness, but, but working class folks, middle class folks are really getting squeezed right now by the cost of living and the cost of housing. And so, you know, we're doing more uh, than we have ever done as a county this year. We've issued more building permits for new housing than, than any year in probably decades. Uh, but it's still not enough, and so we're going to keep moving forward. Yeah, Chair Fletcher, we're known now as the third least affordable city, I mean, behind New York yeah. and San Francisco. So is there anything the county can do to help with rising prices and then the low incomes that so many people have here? Well, and that, that's a really key point is, I mean, we got to do two things. One, we've got to build more housing. We've got to build more housing that's actually affordable. we got to take on the speculators. we got to take on the foreign wealth funds that, they come in and buy $10 million of property and never live in them. But the second part of it is really important, which is we need to really attack the issues around wages. And we've got to fight for good, quality, local jobs that pay you a fair amount. And we talked about that, too. You know, I mean, the, the issue of unions comes up a lot. But, you know, I've never met a union member with a pension who's homeless. And so fighting for good jobs and good wages, uh, holding some of our businesses accountable, make sure they're treating their workers fairly. Uh, I think that's a really important part of what we do because so much of the action we take, whether it's it's rent subsidies or affordable housing or even tackling issues of homelessness, at their core, they're about poverty. And no one who works full time should live in poverty. We can hear you just fine, but there's a little video uh, lag here. We're working to fix that. But we want to talk about gas prices here, too, uh, Chair. Uh, six mm -hmm. bucks a gallon now. Right? I mean, this hits all San Diegans hard. There's, look, there's been a lot of back and forth at the state level. No relief in yeah. sight, though. Is, is there anything county leaders can do to help with these high gas prices at the pump here? Well, our county was the first one in California to come together and support the governor's rebate proposal. I think it is appropriate uh, that the state record surplus be sent back to those hardest hit by gas prices. And those are working class folks. They drive the first furthest, they have the least efficient cars. And there's a lot of families out there right now that are choosing between, you know, things that they normally do with their family, getting them new shoes or other things. And that money's got to go to higher gas costs. And so we are the first county to come together, bipartisan, all five supervisors across party lines to support this proposal and hope that the state can get some money back in the pocket of people that are being hit hardest by gas price increases. And now, do you feel at this point, like it's safe to say we're over COVID? I mean, you started your speech saying, hey, it's great to see you in person. Yeah. Uh, and we're getting back to normal. Any messages to all the people who struggled so much the past two years and now hoping for yeah. normalcy? Well, look, it's hard. I mean, it was hard. We, we all went through it. And, and, and we all went through the difficulties. And look, we did Ooh. I mean, think about we, we did what, but there was a lot of negative impacts. And so now we're in a place that's much different. We have a vaccine. We have therapeutic treatments. We need people to get boosted. We're not doing as good on boosters as we should. But that allows us to resume our life with a sense of normalcy. And, you know, the, the county COVID restrictions on businesses, we lifted those nine months ago. And so we've been living in a state of normal. Now we have to embrace that we're there. We protect ourselves with the vaccine, uh, with a booster. If you want to wear a mask, feel comfortable and wear a mask. Um, but it is now about really addressing the damage that we've done, rebuilding our economy, helping working class families, and we'll continue to monitor COVID. But we've now made it through two variants, two waves. We didn't run out of healthcare system capacity, and so I think we're going to be okay moving forward. Mindful, cautious, safe, uh, but I, I think it is it, it is okay. And, and last night, I think it was real fast. Yeah, nice to be moving forward, that's for sure. Board Chair, thanks so much for joining us here this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank you both. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Have a